Welcome back to the sixth episode of the Doors Podcast. Six episodes deep, and firstly, I just appreciate everyone who's been supporting so far. Again, this part has been crazy. Even on the last episode with Nuovo, Nuovo, that's going crazy. People are loving it. People are trying to get Nuovo back, and we've been to see. We've been to see if he's gonna come back on with us. But I'm T. I'm the owner of Yak, and I'm here with my mentor Tony. What's good, yeah? Well, I can watch Carkin. So firstly. If you haven't subscribed already, you already know what to do. Click the button, subscribe, like, comment, share, all your mates, all that kind of thing. It's the whole notion and the game of each one teach one. You want to put your mates on game because we're putting you on game. So the whole side is a whole way of giving back or giving back to the game. But what we're going to talk about on this episode is the fact that 9 out of 10 of you have no problem. 9 out of 10 of you are just soft. Like, we're Tim people book. Most of you are walking around this world creating demons creating scenarios which just aren't real as a way to feel sorry for yourself and to be honest with you it's it's pathetic like we're we're a minute in we're two minutes in we're not going to go soft on you in this episode we're going to tell you how it is especially if you're in the west if you're from england if you're from america unless you've had like some deep lying trauma as in something to where it was touched as a kid or you've had like a, a parent die or something, you don't have problems. A woman leaving you isn't a problem. Failing isn't a problem. I even know anything else, any kind of scenario that people make up in their mind, like getting rejected at a job, that isn't a problem. You have to transmute all of that into productive means. I use the example of, imagine you have a fire on the back. You have like a backpack and in the back is a, a fire and the fire is constantly burning, but sometimes it might be burning more fiercely to where, let's say you take an L of a woman. So you take that log of that L and you put it in your backpack. Let's say you're, you've are closed a 10K deal and then two minutes after the person said they don't want to do it anymore. So you take that L, you put, get that log, put it in the back and you keep burning the fire. You keep using that fuel to keep pushing you forward, to keep making yourself better. You don't have any problems. You don't have anything that's stopping you the only thing that's stopping you is you and your mind you don't have that belief in yourself or you don't have belief in a higher power to where you almost like delusion just believe that you're going to be a certain caliber of man you're going to become a certain caliber of man you're going to do whether it's retire your parents whether it's become a millionaire whether it's driving a ferrari you don't have that belief and that's the thing that you're missing from your life and something you need to start developing in yourself with anything that you go through in life, you have to understand that it's all a lesson. There's a, there's a pimp or ex-pimp called the boss hog, and he talks about to get to it, you got to go through it. You got to go through that pain, you got to go through that fire to become that superior man. You have to become that same caliber of man. Yeah, so look, I'm going to walk you guys through something. I'm going to walk you through the best case scenario. Check this out. Let's just say you get the girl of your dreams. You get the car of your dreams and you get the job of your dreams. You're making a whole bunch of money and you just think that everything is going great. Deep down in your head, you know that you're one argument away from blowing that bitch. You're one missed check away from losing that car. You're one, you know, late day in where the boss fires your ass because he's already told you and your ass is gone. You guys know in the back of your head, even if you get lucky and you somehow strike out and get rich, you somehow strike out and you find that success, then what's going to happen is you're going to know in the back of your head that any small obstacle is going to destroy you. Now, that's very fundamental to confidence. Confidence is a lot of things and a lot of guys try to define confidence. But a lot of these guys who you guys are speaking to and listening to and watching on youtube and watching on instagram reels a lot of these guys you guys are watching are one bad comment away from getting cancelled they're one account disabled away from being broke again and working at costco you know and there's nothing wrong with working at costco it's not about costco but here's what i'm saying what would happen if those guys were to lose their fault force what would happen if ig just said account deleted they would be over they have built nothing there's no foundation to them there's no foundation to them, and there's no foundation to their confidence. You guys 
don't have a foundation to your confidence because you haven't done anything. You haven't been through anything. Anyone who has three times as much success as you has a hundred times as much failure as you. I'm confident because there's not a thing I haven't been through. Why am I confident? Because I've been through every failure, I've been through every pain, and I've been through every setback a person can possibly be through. You know, there's nothing that has came my way that I didn't come out on top. That comes, one, from inner strength. You know, the confidence comes later. You have an initial level of confidence, like when something happens, I'm going to be able to push through this. But the real confidence in life, the unshakable confidence that comes from the inside, not the charisma, not you guys who talk about fucking Riz, you know, not you guys who think, oh, I bought, you know, this brand of shirt, so now I'm going to have me a girl. That girl is going to eat you apart. The world is going to rip you apart because you're not strong. You're weak. You're not weak because you haven't been through anything. I don't wish hardships upon you guys, but I wish you guys the strength that comes from going through hardships. And they will come. And most of you guys, when they do come, are going to curl up into a ball. Because not only are you weak, the world around you is weak. I don't know if you guys have ever been called weak before, but you're fucking weak. If you ain't where you want to be, you're fucking weak. The lack of confidence in you that has caused you to stay back and be in a position that you don't want to be in is your weakness. That, that is your inner bitch. There's a little girl in the back of your head, and right now she's making the majority of your decisions. You need to turn around and you need to tell that little girl to shut up, and you need to start listening to that other voice in the back of your head that tells you to go out and do hard things. That laziness takes over. That lack of ambition takes over. That lack of confidence takes over, and eventually you find yourself playing video games, sitting on your ass, watching things that aren't really promoting you and approving you. You know, you guys all want better credit. Did you go out and apply for a credit card? You guys all want to be fit. Did you work out today? These are just the very basic fundamentals of these things. You know what you need to be telling girls. You know what kind of boundaries you need to be setting with them, but you don't. You're living exactly the life that you deserve with the exact level of confidence that you deserve. You guys don't deserve anything more than you have right now. This is hard shit to hear. Whatever you have is exactly what you deserve. And for the things that were given to you by someone else, it could be said that you guys don't even deserve those things. You guys want to listen to these guys who bring girls on, who talk about their OnlyFans, and then they make fun of the girls. Modern women today have nothing to offer why should men marry you? Okay, that's cool. You know, what did that do for you? What did that 45 minutes of listening to that guy argue with the broad on the internet, what did that do for you? How did that make you stronger? Half of these guys, you guys who are watching Andrew Tate, what has Andrew Tate's message done for you? What has the Fresh and Fitted podcast's message done for, for you? What has the people you listen to, what have they done for you? Now, some of you guys might be able to say, oh, you know, I got my confidence in order and I started working towards having a bitch. Great, great for those who did. But for the majority of you guys, what has the information that you picked up off the internet done for you? If the answer is nothing, let me tell you why. Because you guys don't want to listen to someone that tells you that you're weak. You don't want to listen to someone that tells you that you have exactly what you deserve. And you don't want to listen to someone who tells you that the reason that you don't have any confidence is because you don't have anything concrete that you can sit back on. Those things are hard to hear. People want to listen to stupid podcasts where they bring girls on and they talk about how important body count is. They want to listen to people talk about how the modern woman is not fit to be married. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, what has that done for you? Why do you listen to that? You listen to that because it doesn't require any work. You listen to that for entertainment. And because you listen to those things for entertainment, because you're used to being entertained, some of you, when you hear our message, are listening to us for entertainment. This episode is here to wake your ass up and remind you, we are not here for entertainment. The people who are here to listen for entertainment, I hope you fall off of our message, and I hope you eventually go out and you find your way, which is over there with those girls talking about how important body count is and why modern women should be, you know, treated just as good as traditional women. You guys want to listen to that shit because it doesn't require any development. 
It doesn't have any harsh messages that make you look within yourself. You guys need to disconnect from all of that shit. Talking about modern women won't do this. Modern people don't do this. Modern marriage, modern divorce. What does that have to do with you? Are you married? No. Then why the fuck are you obsessing with that? I'll tell you something. All the real men, they're going to go out and if they want a wife, they're going to get one. And she's going to act right. Because she believes in them. She believes in them because they believe in themselves. You guys, starting off, are listening to a bunch of bullshit. Bullshit that's easy to listen to. That's going to tell you everything's going to be all right. You guys listen to podcasts from financial people like Tony Robbins, who tell you that getting motivated is where you start getting rich. You don't listen to people like Dan and Pena, who tell you that the reason that you're broke is because you're weak. And the reason that you're weak is because your dad's weak. And your mommy babied you too much and that you need to leave your house and that you need to go out and you need to make 300 phone calls every day asking people if they want to sell their business he tells you exactly what to do you guys don't want to listen to him you guys don't want to listen to the kind of message that people like us have to offer today why is that because you're weak just look at your habits do you have above average habits do you have above average eye contact do you put in an above average amount of work do you have goals to dress above average? You know, do you really want an above average house? Don't say you dream of having an above average house. Do you want to do the work? Do you want to have an above average work schedule? Now, let me tell you guys something. That was just some food for thought. I'm going to let you guys dwell on that. We'll get into that message in another time. But let's think about something for a second. You are weak. You are weak because I say you're weak. You're weak because anybody who was worth a fuck in this world, you would be embarrassed to talk to about your current situation. Now you're young, you know, oh, well, my dad did teach. We'll, we'll get into the excuses later because none of those excuses mean shit to me. They don't. They don't mean shit to anyone, believe it or not. And let me tell you who they really don't mean shit to. They really don't mean shit to that bitch that you have a crush on that you're hoping starts to like you. They really don't mean to her. She does not, not care about your story. And let me tell you about where women do you guys a serious disservice in this day and age. These women, you go on any podcast about suicide, you know, and I'm not promoting it, but I'm saying you go to anything about suicide and depression and everyone's saying, oh, these men today, they're taught to just bottle up their emotions and then they end up killing themselves because they're so depressed and they can't talk to anybody about it. Let me tell you something. The modern man today does not have any problems. He has a very poor perception of what a problem is, and he's weak, so he deals with it in a weak way. You guys need to realize, like T said, unless you were molested, unless you were touched, unless your father was a raging alcoholic and he beat you and told you you were worthless, you know, unless your mother died, unless your sister is dying from cancer, you know, there is real problems out there in this world. You know, you have a mentally disabled brother and your dying mom is no longer able to take care of him, and now you have to take care of him. There is real problems in the world, even in the West. But, just for a little bit of perspective, when you go out into the jungle, and you see the interviews with Africans and Cambodians and everybody else out there, people in India, you know, who haven't eaten in three days, is when they talk to those people, they're like, oh, I'm thankful for everything God's given me, and I'm just thankful I love my mom, and I love my dad. Those people are hard people. So they see problems from a hard mindset. You are not hard people. So you don't see things through a hard mindset. But the beauty is today, if you let this message get through to your head and you change the way that you see problems in this world and in this life, you will begin to become strong. If you make a problem a big deal, it's going to be a big deal. If you tell yourself, oh man, if my girlfriend left me, it would be the hardest thing I've ever been through and it would tear me apart. Well, then it's going to be the hardest thing you've ever been through and it's going to tear yourself apart. Now, mind you, 50, 60, 70 years ago, our grandpas got sent out to war and they had girlfriends and the girlfriends said, oh, we're going to get married when you get back. And then they come back three years later, four years later from fighting the whole time. And then that girlfriend is married with kids. Oh, sorry, Johnny. I didn't think you were going to make it back. I hadn't heard from you. 
or sorry, Johnny, I found something that worked for me. How bad do you think that hurt them? Honestly, think about your grandpa. Think about the men of back then from what you know of them. How bad do you think your problems would hurt them? We don't have a problem with, with managing our depression. Men don't have a problem with bottling up their anguish. They have a problem identifying anguish and problems. They have a problem seeing things for what they are. They have a problem with blowing things out of proportion. If your girl leaves you, that doesn't mean shit. If it hurts a little bit, it hurts a little bit. If you loved her, you loved her, but she's gone now. What does dwelling on it do for you? What is going on Reddit or going on some Discord group or going on some men going their own way group? What does it do to sit there and to talk about, oh, she cheated on me. All women are cheaters. What does that do for you? It doesn't do anything for you. If anything, it hurts you more. And it also hurts you more to be around other losers. All those people are losers. Anybody who's complaining about anything is a loser. If you complain about anything, you're a loser. You cannot like things. There's a lot of things I don't like. There's a lot of questions I don't want to answer. But I answer them because they help people. Whatever problems you think you have, you probably don't have. Statistically, the majority of you guys are playing up your problems. Statistically, you know, for the thousands of people that actually listen to this, there are some of you that have some real problems. And here's what I'm willing to bet. All of you guys that have real problems, don't complain about those real problems as much as the people who don't have real problems because you become strong. And that's what it takes to survive through a real problem. You have to become strong. It's just what we do as people. You guys aren't going out and you aren't putting in a tremendous amount of work to see your success. You're not going out and you're talking to women. You know, you're wondering why you don't have any women or women aren't attracted to you, but you're not attracting women. If you were ugly, I mean ugly, and you went out and you talked to a hundred girls every day, we can all agree at least two of them would give you their number, right? How many numbers a day are you getting? How many women do you have on your roster? How many women have ever told you that they were impressed by you? They're not impressed by you because you're not impressive. Girls don't tell you, man, you're so cool because you're not cool. Why are you not cool? Because you haven't put in any work at all. You guys watch things that are centered on changing the world around us. You want women to start behaving better. You want society to start not targeting you. You want men to stop being so demonized. You're worried about racial politics. You're worried about class politics. You're worried about money. All the rich are taking away from you. Okay, name one rich man that came and took away from you. The immigrants are taking away from you. Name one immigrant that came into your house and took something. Collective problemism is a very modern issue. If someone else has a problem, now you guys have the problem. If some guy got cheated on, oh, all these women will do you dirty. You know, the truth is, the only one doing you dirty is you. You're doing yourself a great disservice by cheating yourself of a real experience. And I'm here to tell you that. You guys should be ashamed of yourself. Now, I'm going to tell you guys what you can do to start changing this. You need to go out. You need to triple, quadruple, or even 10 times your failure rate. You need to tell yourself, I'm weak. I'm running behind. I am behind average. I am not where I want to be. I am underperforming. And the reason it's very important for you to tell yourself that is so you can ask yourself, is this what I want to be? Do I want to be underperforming? Do I want to be weak? Do I want to be like this forever? Well, if you dance around the subject, you're going to be like this forever. If you're not even willing to face the pain of looking within yourself and seeing how far behind you are, how are you going to gain the strength to go out and change it? How are you going to convince somebody that you're the person that they should pick? You know, you guys with these regular jobs, do you know how much harder it is to convince someone for a million dollar job to invest into your company, to into your idea for you guys that have these average girlfriends do you know how much harder it is to get a quality woman to be interested in you do you know how much harder it is to get a beautiful woman with a low body count you guys want to talk about these beautiful women with the low body count they're out there would they be interested in you should they be interested in you would you be interested in you if you were a woman of the species and you were good looking with a lot going on for herself 
why should she pick you? Why should she pick your DNA? Why should she pick your genes? Why should she choose you of all people to say, I want to carry his DNA? He's the choice I'm making. He's the one I want. Why should she? For you guys that think you have problems, you need to make some problems. You need to start looking within yourself and you need to start asking these very difficult questions. And it's only until you can ask yourself these questions that you can decide whether you are or are not where you want to be in life. That's what's going to spur on the development. That's what's going to spur on the growth. It takes a lot of courage to look within yourself. What I recommend you guys do is take a piece of paper, fold it in half, and on the left side of the paper, you write down all of your biggest problems. You know, oh, I'm, I'm a liar. I watch too much porn. I'm a loser. I'm scared to talk to people in public. And then on the right side, you need to write down everywhere you're underperforming and what you need to fix. Oh, I need a better job. I definitely need to get my car fixed. All those things, all the little life things. But more importantly, on the left side, you need to write down everywhere that you go wrong. Take a negative inventory. And there's nothing like looking on paper to seeing everywhere you're fucking up. Because that's what people see. Let me tell you guys something about life. Oh, I never cheated on my wife. Or I don't beat my kids. I'm not an alcoholic and I don't do drugs. Okay, you're not the worst kind of person you can possibly be. But what makes you special? If your if your appeal to people about why you're great is the fact that you don't do terrible things and you're not doing great things, well then what does that say about you? You're a nobody. Tons of people don't do drugs. Tons of people don't beat their kids and cheat on their wife. What makes them special? You walk by them every day. You can't even tell. You can't even tell a cheater from a non-cheater. But here's what you can tell. You can tell hard work. You can actually tell what kind of hard work someone does. You drive by someone, they've got a great physique. You can tell they work hard. You can tell they work hard in the gym. They've got a great car. You can tell they work hard financially. Someone's got a great walk. Oh, you can tell he's put in work to his self-image. You can see hard work from a mile away. You don't have to know anything else about that person. And you know what? Those people might cheat on their wife. They might do drugs. They might drink. But it doesn't matter because you can't see that. I'm not promoting those things, but I'm saying how much more do they matter when you can't tell, but you can tell when someone puts in the work. You can tell when someone has unshakable confidence. You can look in someone's eyes and you can see determination and you can tell if little things in this world would tear them apart. You can see that just from looking deep into their eyes. You can tell who's strong and who's not. Now, why is it that you're designed to see strength you're designed to see hard work, but you're not designed to see the flaws with people. It's because the truth is the only people who change this world at all are the people who've put in that work. Many of our presidents have had cheating scandals, and some people would say some of those presidents were the best ones we've ever had. What does that tell you? That your only accomplishment is that you don't do terrible things. Well, then you have no accomplishment. You're doing the bare minimum of just not being an awful person. And even some of the people who are awful people are also great people. There's a lot of people who spend their early life ripping off the stock market, Ponzi schemes, and burning smaller companies. And then they get old and they go donate most of that money to lesser countries. They go donate a lot of that money to people who need help. They change their, they change their views. They change who they are. And they can go out and they can do things. So for you guys that want to be charitable... How are you going to do that without money? For you guys that want to raise your kids to be different from the world, how are you different from the world? Do you want your kids to be like you? That's a very, very, very baseline question that you need to ask yourself. Would you be proud if your son came out just like you right now? If your son was 20 years old and he was just like you, would you be proud of him? Think about that one for a second. I'm going to ask you questions that you can't dance around. Would you want your son to be just like you? Would you want your daughter to marry a man just like you? If the answer is no, then you've got some work to do. It's that simple. 
T, go ahead. There'll be two kinds of people who respond to this kind of message or to everything that we've said so far. They'll be the tied to uh, five minutes in, they've already clicked off. They, they've already had their ego attacked and they've had their like self-esteem like kicked to the ground. They couldn't even consider listening to the rest of the mer message because they know that it directly applies to them. They don't want to face that reality. And there's the type of people who you should never want to be like or want to be around. Or the fact that if you listen to this now, I mean, it's your own, a different time. You understand, okay, maybe in the past I have messed up, but I want to rectify that. And to you, I applaud, I applaud the fact that you, you're willing to get your feelings hurt. And that's what you have to do in this game. That's what you have to experience. You have to experience whether it's the L, whether it's the getting your feelings hurt, whether it's getting your entire worldview shaken. They're the kind of things which they change you. They all lead to epiphanies. They all lead to moments into your life to where you look back on this day or you'll look back on this certain moment to where you're like, damn, that was, that was where everything changed. It's almost like a reality check. And those reality checks, they can be painful. They can be things to where they really have you just sat there in your bed, just looking up at the ceiling thinking, or something I'm thinking, you just kind of stood there or laid down, just staring, just reminiscing on things that have been said or the failures that you've made. But you have to understand this is a good thing. The fact that you're here right now is a good thing. And if you are here right now, I want you to message me the word elevate on Instagram because it shows that you have a certain mindset, you have a certain character traits, which I respect and you will go far. So it's a matter of, okay, we essentially could see about this first like 25 minutes, but now it's a matter of changing that. And I don't think people realize just how quickly things can change. But if you actually put in the work, and if you have even just a basic guideline of where you want to go and you're consistently showing up, it will scare you how quickly things can change. It's even like, let's say in the gym, if you're a beginner in the gym, when you first go in, within a month, you're seeing gains. And obviously to get those gains, you have them to go through the pain of the workout, especially when you don't have that muscle memory available there. But within that first month, you might see your first bicep vein. You might see your abs starting to define. You might be able to see the separation in your quads. They're the kind of things to where they're almost like a motivator, almost like a momentum builder to where you can see, okay, we've done this so far. I've already seen these results. How great are these results going to become? And now you have to be thinking about that with everything you do. Yes, this might be painful for you right now. But use it as a lesson. Use it as a kind of a a trampoline to where, okay, I've I've accepted my past. I've messed up. I'm not fulfilling my potential. But now, now the time where I want to go out and do that. So what I would recommend to you is, I mean, Tony, you talked about it, or you alluded to it, the fact that for a lot of people they're watching things for entertainment. So as opposed to being within that group of people, start watching things for education. Whether it's pages such as ours, whether it's pages such as Nuovo, whether it's YouTube, YouTubers who are promoting a message that's actually going to be beneficial to your life. There's so many people out there who have been in places worse than you and are now in superior places. They're the millionaires, they're the ones with the six, they're the ones with everything that you want. But again, they've had to go through that process. And one thing that I recommend for all of you who are still listening is to just read on 50 Cent's story. I recommend you purchase The 50th Law by 50 Cent and Robert Greene. And you also purchase his book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter. Because you will then realize how much he has been through to become the man that he is today. Like he, obviously, you know, the whole, time, whole thing that he got shot nine times and then he had his whole thing. But at the same time, he lost his parents, he lost his mum when he was eight years old, went to go and live in with his grandparents. And his whole kind of story, his whole 
mindset has been built throughout all these failures that happened to him. And if he could have been the type to where, okay, I've grown up in the ghetto, my parents have died, I've been shot nine times, just, I guess, the universe doesn't like me, God, he he hates me, so I'm just going to kind of go down this path of debauchery and just this vicious cycle of smoking weed, whether it's partying, whether it's sleeping with a bunch of women. He could have gone down that route, but instead he used everything to his advantage. Is that I, ideology of the having that fire on your back and just putting logs in there, just constantly everything that you go through is not taking it personally. That's the whole importance of being able to charge into the game. I genuinely believe that if you are a man who can charge into the game, and for those people don't know what that means, that essentially means to be able to move past something. Life is a game. If there's winners and losers, it's a game. So if you're able to charge into the game, it means you can just say, okay, cool. I understand that in life, sometimes I'll win, sometimes I'll lose. There'll be high highs, there'll be low lows. But as long as I keep moving forward, I will eventually win. So that's the whole idea of charging to the game. It's a matter of understanding, okay, I've been through everything so far, but here's what it is. I'm going to charge up to the game and I'm going to keep moving forward. So as Tony said, write down those negative aspects about you and the, the whole kind of self-reflection so you know exactly what you want to do to improve. And I'd expand on that in saying, write down some general milestones that you want to achieve or create like the, the perfect image of the man that you want to be. What kind of things would they be doing? What kind of things would they be saying? What kind of things would they be wearing? And then start becoming that. Would they be walking around in some Reebok joggers or would they be in a custom suit? And that's not to have a knock on Reebok, obviously people have financial constraints or whatever, but it's having that mental image to where you can kind of picture this man he wants to become and it's a matter of building yourself up to actually actualizing that to make it become your reality. And obviously that's going to take some time. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's not something that you can just decide, oh, okay, cool, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to buy a Ferrari today. Nah, you might have to go from the Honda to the Beamer. I mean, the Beamer to the Merc and the Merc to the Ferrari. Everything in life is a process, but as long as you're constantly moving forward, as long as you're not allowing the past to affect your future, you will be good to go. And there was a quote from Donald Trump. As one of the coldest things that I believe Trump has said, he said it in his book of uh, The Art of a Deal. And he says, I tried to learn from the past, but I plan to put a future by fo focusing exclusively on the present. I'll repeat that. I tried to learn from the past, but I plan to put a future by focusing exclusively on the present. What you should do is you should completely leave that past behind you. Charge that all to the game. And you should focus on only now. Be more deliberate in the things that you're doing. Be more aggressive in the actions you're taking. Be more much attentive in the way that you're going through life so that you can become the man he wants to become. You can look back on this period to where it's like, that was it's like a whole new person. Like you're building yourself. It's like a, a Lego character almost. It's like you're just building this person up to where they eventually just become this person to where it's almost like you're unrecognizable. It's like people from five years ago, they'll see you where you're five years later, like, damn, what happened? What transpired for you to become this caliber, to this, become this like stupendously cold individual? You have to go through all the BS to get there, but as long as you do, as long as you keep pushing forward, as long as you keep charging things to the game, and also not taking things personally, but at the same time, it's taking things, that's a whole kind of spiel in and of itself, but you have to balance between taking things personally in the sense of, let's say a woman rejected you. You don't want to seek revenge on her because that's a weird, that's kind of sadistic and just to be honest, that's gay. But at the same time, you want to take it personally in the sense of, okay, if you you want to do that to me, ooh, I'm going to become a man who's so cold that you're going to come back to me and that's when I'm going to get my last lap. Success is the best revenge, whether it's with women, whether it's with your employees, whether it's with someone who was preying on your downfall, that success, that feeling of accomplishment, knowing that you've become the man who you thought you were going to be. People, all they can do is respect that. Even if someone disdains you with their entire heart, if you have those tangible results, if you have that 
respect on your name, all they can do is kind of like look up to you because you you said, okay, I'm going to become actually you actually become it. So if everything you go for your G's, just keep pushing forward. Take nothing personally, try to game and just have that purpose on your mind, have that mission, have that vision and visualize often as well. Visualize the success. If you watch any kind of interviews from anyone successful, they always talk, especially athletes, they always talk about how they visualized their success. They visualized whether it's Conor McGregor fighting in an arena or whether it's Leon Edwards getting a knockout. People constantly visualize their future life, their future successes. So that's something you should be doing as well. But combine everything together and the rest will be history, bro. Yeah, no doubt. That shit was cold. And another thing I want to touch on is you said 50 Cent a minute ago. 50 Cent had a really cold quote, a 50th law that I really liked. He said his drug of choice is reality. Mm -hmm. And that shit could go in any direction. But anyone who says something like that, their drug of choice is reality. You can bet your ass they don't sit there and lie to themselves about where they're at, where life is around them. For real. For real. My is um, that's the first chapter within the book just talking about you have to be able to see things where you are it's something that i remember when i first started working with tony something that constantly reminded me of or like give me pointers to where no matter how delusional you want to be you have to see things to where you currently are even the situation you're currently in and something that i kind of evolved from that and something that i've constantly preached for our yak is you want to be re realistic where you currently are, but delusional with where you want to go. In the sense of you want to be hypercritical of your current situation so that you can actually change that and you can improve on that and you can elevate yourself to become that delusional version or the delusional kind of beliefs that will transform you into that version you want to become. You have to keep pushing all, you have to keep being drowned in realism, being drowned in the reality you're currently in in order to live that fantasy. I think we covered everything for today. Oh, cool. It sounds good. So I think we left have to both got stuff to do. But it's going to be a, it's still like a 30 minute one. But this is one of the, I feel like it's going to be one of the coldest ones in the sense of there's so much to unpack and so much to, to kind of break down within this, but you have to, Listen to it again. It's not one thing that you're going to get it the first time. You have to listen to it again and again, as I said earlier. DM me on Instagram if you got this far, because it shows you a certain type of person and I respect that. DM me and we'll, we'll just, you can help you. It's going to make sure that you do get to that level that you want to get to. But Tony, is there anything you want to plug? Yeah, so you guys, for those of you that aren't already following me, check it out. The Gamed Up Mindset. Gamed Up Mindset on Instagram. Gamed Up Mindset on Twitter. The link to my book is gaslightacademy.gumroad.com. I'm dropping a new book this week. Um, I'm still debating on whether I'm going to release it as an audio book or as a, a written book. So for those of you guys that have some interest, go ahead and message me and let me know what you think or what you would like to purchase. With all that being said, there's going to be two types of people at the end of today's episode. Who the fuck do they think they're talking to like that. You can't talk to me like that. Or there's going to be people to say, damn, I really got to get my shit together. I got to get my shit together and whether and all do you dig. For me, you already know the vibe. Yeah, all Young Alpha Kings on Instagram, Twitter. And I'd recommend all of you to join the free Discord as well. I literally wrote a free little piece of game. I was in a little, it's like, it like uh, three pages long kind of spiel on the more probably face of cold you become but it's funny that we're actually speaking on this now but yeah join the discord if you want any of my books or do you know where to go link in my bio and all the links will be in the description as well if, then don't forget like comment subscribe all that good stuff and now you have a blessed day peace yeah